attention to the mirror. It's probably a little bit of tape. Gnosticism has been with us for a long time. Gnosticism is a term for anything that is spiritual, anything that uh, ha is well, basically what we call religion. But this this Gnosticism is only reserved for the people at the top. It's not, not meant for the sheeple down below. And so this is where the understanding of the mean is that what people see in a religion really depends on where they are and the level of knowledge, and that's what Gnosis means, it means knowledge, but they use it in, instead of using the Greek term metanosis, or uh, metanosis, metanowledge, the Greek term metadata, this is metan metanosis, and what it basically is, is, uh, is the understanding of the things that are beyond beyond us, beyond our physical existence. That typically means the spiritual dimension, uh, parallel universes, so on and so forth. So Bad drivers, once again, following a tandem. I need to start taking down license plates and start reporting to people. That's the only way they'll learn. perspectives of, you know, these, the, the, the other people who were all part of Donald Trump's crew initially. Uh, the all was sort of scattered to the wind. Uh, 
I'll say this about that about that is that they're not puppets. They don't they don't parrot things. But at the same thing, at the same time, is they're definitely not intellectuals. And so a, a large chunk of what they say tends to be dismissed because their articulation isn't the way it should be in terms of what you would think be to be professionally on the radio. What you're hearing in many cases from uh, from these people is you're hearing the average voice, and this includes uh, uh, Kiki Green. Uh, but Kiki Green, to solve her problems, went behind the paywall, like a lot of other people have done. And uh, the only way you can get her to hear stuff is if you uh, sort of subscribe to Patreon, and then we have an open public and free and all a private conversation. But what happens is that all these things, they, 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 do, they do sort of touch on noses a little bit. But they're down at the, when you talk about Kiki Green, we're talking about Diamond and Silk. And the average listener that, that they're connected to, uh, these people are all of faith. The people of faith are tend, tend to be on the line of the sheep, they're the, the part of the average person. They don't understand that the people who are above, the bishops, and so on and so forth, have all betrayed them and then sold them out, and that they are the needy people. These are the people who are going to be sacrificed in any war or whatever. And the wars are part of a sacrifice. It is to their war god. They do, they do have a war god. They do have a number of different gods that they sacrifice. This is what we see in spirit.
get ahead of a very heavy bumpy world and around the moon. Anyways, what happens is that it is the Sunnis, this is where the school of Wahhabis, and particularly the Wahhabis, who are the ultra-Orthodox. And they're the ones who do jihad. They, they have a necessity for jihad. And not just against anyone who doesn't believe in Islam. It's not an issue, of, it's not a war of Islam. It's a war in, in issue, it's the issue of, of Wahhab itself. to fix this later. The Wahhab means, means that everybody needs to be Wahhab. And if they if they refuse to convert to his uh, Wahhab, that's when you have the fall of the sword and now you have Jihad. You have a holy war. But the thing is that we talk about, oh, you can't say that about the Muslims and so on. Yes, you can't because they, it's in their belief. But not only is it in the belief of Islam, because Islam, the whole thing of the Sharia law and everything, if you understand it properly, comes from Leviticus. It's basically the book of Leviticus. But it's, it, this is now under Prophet Muhammad. And so the Jews have the same thing. You look at, look, look at the Talmud, and you'll understand the same thing within the Talmud, that there is degrees of ultra-Orthodoxy that believe in warfare, holy warfare. And guess what? The Roman Catholics have the same thing. They spent 700 years, the first 700 years of Europe in warfare. And so, uh, jihad and the violence of jihad is not isolated to Islam. have to deal with and is off and often overlooked when we're dealing with sometimes these larger issues. You have to look at how things play out among the people. And that's the microcosm. And this is what happens there is no understanding of the difference between uh, the different groups of Islam. Just like there is no understanding in many cases 
when uh, the wolf people, the wolf people of the world, for our humanists, have no understanding of the difference between Christianity. And this is where you look and so you sort of see that, the, you know, Catholicism had its own very large jihad. It's been really jihad now for years. Well, actually, for seven, four to seven hundred years, it's been doing jihad. It's just recently that the jihad has become more uh, covert. So what happens is a lot of what we call Islamic terrorism. There is, on the equivalent side, there is a form of Christian terrorism. And this Christian terrorism is as deadly as is the Islamic. It's there to overthrow governments. It's there to sort of, you know, do regime change. So the regime becomes more friendly in one direction or the other. So the Islamic uh, jihadists who are doing their terrorist stuff will want more of an Islamic government. And the Catholic will want more of a Catholic Protestants certainly have their understanding of wanting more of a Protestant type of thing. I mean, this is what this is what Ireland was all about. I mean, you know, the battle between Ireland, the North, Northern Ireland, and the rest of Ireland. One, well, the North was uh, Protestant, and the South, uh, the rest of Ireland was uh, Catholic. And they've been battling it out for, for, for well, actually for centuries now. It is recently that the, that the, the hostilities have sort of not been what they were. I guess people have nothing to do in their lives except uh, create a fantasy. Well, okay, this is the uh, about this. The, the whole world is nothing but a fantasy. Yeah, fantasy in one direction, and fantasy in another direction. not as woke or as intelligent as they may seem as they may seem to be. And this is what caused a large chunk of the problem is that they'll get into something and then it won't go the way they expect it to go, or in other words the way their advisors and their LARP because it, it, basically if you understand a LARP, a large chunk of these world things like Davos and stuff like that, they're all LARPs. A live action role play. The role will play a scenario or a war game or whatever, and uh, they expect the outcome to be similar. But the thing is, once again, this is not necessarily the reality. And so, what happens a lot of times when reality hits, they choose, okay, let's do this, whatever it's going to be. They get into it, it doesn't turn out the way they expected it to be, and then, then they start falling apart. And this is what you see with Biden. Why are they attacking Biden? Because the fantasy of what things were supposed to be is now gone. And now that 
le left with wrecked and ruined cities. They're left with an increase in, a massive increase in poverty that they can't handle. coming up to fix up the camera. I didn't realize I bounced, bounced around so much. Uh, probably unpleasant view that the, the camera is now taking pictures of the sky. <laughs> so, uh, sorry about that. Let's get this uh, situated back properly. There we go. Uh, and that's where, where you see, start seeing a lot of the confusion. And this way you also begin to see the disconnect between uh, people like Diamond and Silk and who represent uh, the sheeple, the average person, and uh, someone like uh, Lionel LeBron, who sort of represents the intellectual or the world class. So the world class considers themselves to be part of the intellectual. And this is where they are. They, 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 they even define it in this way. When they do their Democrat demographics. They're always looking at uh, the Democrats are primarily looking for the educated. This is why they sit most of the time on university campus. They're looking for people who are educated. And in that in that sense, is that the academics create their own sense of view. They set the great role in the world. That is not necessary reality. Just because you're woke does not necessarily mean you're in see reality. You can be woke to another dream. I said it before. Just because you've been red pilled doesn't mean you're seeing outside the matrix. You may be just seeing, you may be rippled, but not to the degree where you're outside the matrix. You may be still within the matrix, even, even though you've been red pilled. Red pill does not mean you're out of the matrix. It just means your perspective has changed. That's all it means. It shifts in perspective, it shifts in the dynamics. As this becomes the reality, uh, the real pill becomes less and less effective. You have to think, thinking for yourself is extremely difficult because there's so many, so much attraction to thinking like others, but making it appear as if you are the one who is woke. Because then you have something to say in the crowd. In the crowd to listen to the people who can, who can have a sense of value. And that's what I said before. That, that, you know, that, oh yes, you are worth it. Well, that's just the reality part. But there are a lot of people who believe in this. They, they don't talk about these positive affirmations. It is another thing entirely, no matter what your worth is, to continue moving forward. And this is the thing is that more often than not, if you can do something that's, that's fundamentally ethical or have a degree of morality, which is not common today, it's going to be difficult. <laughs>